Hi, my name is David Worden. As many of you may already know, I have a website with a very active forum. On that forum, people ask questions and they get answers, they list items for sale and so on. One of the questions that comes up fairly often is, how do I build my high range? It's not strong enough, it's not secure enough, it doesn't sound good, or I need more endurance in the high range. The answer for all those is in having a good, correctly built high range. And I'm going to go through a technique now that I learned from Rich Madison, a jazz euphonium player who's now deceased, but he was an excellent jazz player. He taught jazz at North Texas State University back when it was named that. Uh, Rich had a, an amazing high range, very strong and clear up to a double B flat and very secure. He wasn't just uh, buzzing through the horn. It was actually a, a resonant note that he was playing up that high. I'll show you now the technique he talked about when he had to build high range beyond what it had been for a while. It was up to a high G, he said, but he needed a high a double B flat. So this is the way he did it. Now the key to a good high range, one of the keys, we all think about strength right here. We want muscle strength here. We all know that because our, we don't feel like we have enough muscles when we try to go higher than we are able to play. What we don't think about as often is it comes from down here as well. It has to have a good solid airstream to support this, a very strong airstream. As you go up higher, the muscles get tighter. The aperture, the space your lips open um, in the cycles as they open and close, gets much, much smaller and it's harder to get the air through there. Many people have a high range that's built on just that lip strength, and I used to as well. So when you go up high, it doesn't quite sound strong, but you'll still get the notes. We'll go up to a high E flat concert or F in treble clef. Now that didn't sound too bad, but it wasn't very loud in the room. If I had a microphone right on my bell, it would probably be enough, but in a real acoustic situation, we need to do more. So Rich Madison's idea was, we want to start out by making sure we're using enough air, which will help build the muscles correctly. To do that, we want to produce a good tone. He would use two octave scales. So let's start on, on a B flat or a C in treble clef, which is fairly um, accessible for most players. We want to plant the bottom note with a good tone, about a mezzo forte. As we go up the scale, we want to crescendo at least to a forte by the top. Now the natural tendency, as I mentioned, because your lips are getting tighter, it's harder to get the air through. So if you just do it naturally, there'll be a decrescendo in the air. We don't want that. We want to crescendo the air. And again, we want to try to keep the tone consistent growing slightly over the course of the scale. I'll do one more. Then of course, as you might assume, the idea is to go up progressively higher. I'll start now a half step higher, which will be a concert B or a C sharp in treble clef. So by doing that, you're ensuring that the air really, it really is flowing when you get to the top, and that will help to make your tone resonant. So if you don't have a microphone close by, it will still get out into the hall. Even if the band is playing behind you, you have to play over them. Being high helps a little bit, but being high and weak is still not going to get there. I'll go next to the note that I was really striving to strengthen once I learned this technique, which was my dependable E flat, but I wanted to make it sound better than it did when I played it previously. fuzzy today. I'm still not quite back in shape, but um, it was much stronger than the first one I played. More importantly, it was using a lot of air from underneath. So my chances of getting it actually improve somewhat. I'm more likely to hit the note as long as my chops aren't completely tired. I'm also able to pick out the note out of the blue a little more, and that's because I'm getting the horn to resonate with me. When you're not using enough air, you're essentially doing this except the horn helps to amplify it. But as you know, the horn has a partial series.
but wants to play certain notes along the way. It doesn't want to play that smooth ascension that I just played on the mouthpiece. When you go to the high notes, You can almost simulate that if you're not using a lot of air. When you pump more air into it, the horn will want to fall into those notes, into the notes that are in the partial series or the overtone series. So you hear more level notes as you go up. That is the key to making the notes really resonate because then it's not just your lips buzzing and being amplified, it's the horn resonating along with you. It's vibrating with you. It's helping to get the sound out as it does in the rest of the range. So I played the scale before up to an E flat. Now we'll, we'll try an arpeggio this time. Pretty easy to do, um, as easy as the scale, because again, I'm making the horn speak with me. So that interval of a fourth to get up to the E flat, I'm not guessing at as much. My ear is helping me, of course, but the horn is helping me too. So that's the basic technique. You start on a note where you know the high note is fairly comfortable. So start two octaves below that, get a good tone, slur, don't tongue, because we want to keep the air flowing all the way to the top. We don't want it interrupted. Da, 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 da. We want da as you go up. Keep the air flowing and get a good strong note on top because you've crescendoed. When you've mastered that, it sounds good then. Move half step higher, do the same thing again. Uh, I like to push myself when I'm building my range, which I, I need higher than I just played sometimes. I'll get to my comfortable note, the one that sounds really good, and then I'll push myself at least one step or one half step higher. It won't sound good often, but I'll do the best I can and try to hold it a little bit when I get up there, which helps to give me the feel for it, first of all, and helps me to build the strength here and a little bit more here as I'm doing that. As you get advanced at this, if you have a lot of air, um, some people with smaller lungs uh, would have a problem going more than just a two octave scale, but I like to do sometimes a three octave scale. Another variation that I like to do sometimes because it helps me to control myself in the high range, to learn control. Getting to the high note is not usually a problem once you've built the strength. You're sort of forcing your way up there and the energizing you're doing along the way helps you to get the note out. A little more difficult then is coming back down from the note. So I'll try to play, if I can, a two octave scale up and at least one octave down or two octaves down if I feel like I have the air that day. I'll go a little lower where it's harder to do that because the air is going out faster. I'll start on the B flat this time, C and treble clef. If that's hard, um, what I would suggest is doing the upward scale first in two octaves to make sure you've got that right. And then start in the middle, start on the second octave, just do the top octave and then come down from that. down one or two octaves, whatever you're comfortable with. You can build on that, of course. You can do more octaves from the bottom. Sometimes I'll do a sequence to keep my chops from getting too tight from playing all in one range. Let's do a, a D flat scale, E flat in treble. Then I might start on the middle octave and go downward. or even the bottom octave and go downward. That gives my lips a chance to relax a little bit uh, as they vibrate more widely down low. It helps to circulate blood through them and so on. And besides which, it's a good exercise to do. 
There are very few players I've known who have a brilliant high range who don't also have a great low range. That includes trumpet players. You'll often hear them playing below what should be the bottom of the instrument, which is normally their low written F sharp below the staff in treble clef, but they'll play way below that because that builds, I think it helps build mass in the chops and muscle. They can get their high range more easily that way. So that's the idea. Again, thank you to Rich Madison for helping me learn this technique. Uh, he demonstrated it brilliantly because he could go about a fifth higher than I just showed you uh, and do it very solidly. So that's, that's my goal ultimately. Uh, but your goal can be whatever you want. Just do it gradually. And remember the concepts. Start with a good tone. Crescendo. Maintain the good tone. And that will help to guide you to producing your high notes the right way. Hope this has been helpful. You can read more on the forum. We've talked about it there somewhat. And people ask questions or tell about their issues dealing with things. You might learn from going there. dwarden.com. There's a forum a square, a rectangular button right on the front page there. Just click on that. You go right into the forum. You don't have to be registered to read things. You have to be registered to post things, but it's free. So feel free to do so. Thanks very much.